A Dream of Sunshine by Eugene Field I'm weary of this weather and I hanker for the ways which people read of in the Psalms and preachers paraphrase. The grassy fields, the leafy woods, the banks where I can lie and listen to the music of the brook that flutters by, or, by the pond out yonder, hear the red-winged blackbird's call where he makes believe he has a nest. But hasn't one at all, and by my side should be a friend. A trusty, genial friend, with plenteous store of tales galore and natural leaf to lend. Oh, how I pine and hanker for the gracious boon of spring, for then I'm going a-fishing with John Lyle King. How like to pygmies will appear creation, as we float upon the bosom of the tide in a three by thirteen. Boat. Forgotten all vexations and all vanities shall be, as we cast our cares to windward and our anchor to the lee. Anon the minnow bucket will emit batrachian sobs, and the devil's darning needles shall come wooing of our bobs. The sun shall kiss our noses and the breezes toss our hair, this latter metaphoric, we've no fimbriae to spare. And, I, transported by the bliss, shan't do a plaguey thing but cut the bait and string the fish for John Lyle King. Or, if I angle, it will be for bullheads and the like, while he shall fish for gamey bass, for pickerel, and for pike. I really do not care a rap for all the fish that swim, but it's worth the wealth of Indies just to be along with him in grassy fields, in leafy woods, beside the water brooks, and hear him tell of things he's seen or read of in his books, to hear the sweet philosophy that trickles in and out the while he is discoursing of the things we talk about. A fountainhead refreshing, a clear, perennial spring is the genial conversation of John Lyle King. Should varying winds are shifting, tides redound to our despite. In other words, should we return all bootless home at night, I'd back him up in anything he had a mind to say of mighty base he'd left behind or lost upon the way. I'd nod assent to every yarn involving piscine game, I'd cross my heart and make my affidavit to the same. For what is friendship but a scheme to help a fellow? Out. And what a paltry fish or two to make such bones about. Nay, sentiment a mantle of sweet charity would fling or perjuries committed for John Lyle King. At night, when as the camp fire cast a ruddy, genial flame, he'd bring his tuneful fiddle out and play upon the same. No diabolic engine this, no instrument of sin, no relative at all to that. Lewd toy, the violin, but a godly Hoosier fiddle, a quaint archaic thing full of all the proper melodies our grandmas used to sing, with, Bonnie Doon, and, Nellie Gray, and, sitting on the stile, the heart bowed down, the, white cockade, and, charming Annie Lyle, our hearts would echo in the somber Empyrean ring beneath the wizard sorcery of John Lyle. King, the subsequent proceedings should interest me no more. Wrapped in a woolen blanket should I calmly dream and snore. The finny game that swims by day is my supreme delight, and not the scaly game that flies in darkness of the night. Let those who are so minded pursue this latter game but not repine if they should lose a boodle in the same, for an example to you all one paragon should serve. He towers a very monument to valor and to nerve. No bob tail flush, no nine spot high, no measly pair can wring a groan of desperation from John Lyle King. A truce to badinage. I hope far distant is the day when from these scenes terrestrial our friend shall pass away. We like to hear his cheery voice uplifted. In the land, to see his calm, benignant face, to grasp his honest hand. We like him for his learning, his sincerity, his truth, his gallantry to woman and his kindliness to youth, for the lenience of his nature, for the vigor of his mind, for the fullness of that charity he bears to all mankind. That's why we folks who know him best so reverently cling, and that is why I pen these lines, to John Lyle King. And now adieu, a fond adieu to thee, O muse of rhyme. I do remand thee to the shades until that happier time when fields are green, and posies gay are budding everywhere, and there's a smell of clover bloom upon the vernal air when by the pond out yonder the red-winged blackbird calls, and distant hills are wed to spring in vales of waterfalls, when from his aqueous element the famished pickerel springs two hundred feet into the air for butterflies and things, then come again, O gracious muse, and teach me how to sing the glory of a fishing cruise with John Lyle King.